Okay, let's move on to 8.10, impulse. Now we have seen impulse in chapter 4. What was impulse? Impulse is simply the change in momentum of a system. Okay? So if we apply an impulse, then that means that it changes the momentum. Um, which means that momentum was not conserved inside that system. Okay. Now, we never really looked at how to define impulse or calculate impulse. So we want to look at um, the relationship between force and impulse. Okay? So we've seen that impulse is related to the change in momentum. Um, and we've seen that change in momentum is related to force. So now let us have a look at what is shown over here. Okay. So we know that acceleration is delta V delta T. Mass times acceleration is uh, mass times delta V delta T. And this M delta V over here is actually your change in momentum. Okay. So if we rearrange this equation, we have the MA over here and we have delta P delta T and we rearrange this. We see that your change in momentum delta P is equal to MA delta T. And what is what is MA? MA is the sum of your forces acting on a body, on an object. Okay? So this is this is where we're going now. So your change in momentum is equal to the sum of the forces times the change in time. Okay, so what does this mean? So your momentum changes as your force your, the, or your vector sum of your forces gets applied over a certain time period. Okay? And this delta P is your uh, your impulse. So impulse, this is the impulse equation. And your impulse is force times time, basically. Sum of the forces times delta T. Okay? Now, just as a kind of an intuition, remember earlier on in this, in this chapter, we were saying, if you are going to uh, crash into a wall, do you want to crash into... Uh, a concrete wall with or without a mattress in front of it. And we know that obviously we would want to crash into the mattress. And this equation, um, especially this one here, I mean they really are the same, this gives us a bit of an idea of why. So remember that if you crash into the, uh, the concrete wall and if you crash into the mattress that's resting against the concrete wall, your change in momentum will be the same. Okay? Are you with me? So, you hit the concrete wall or you hit the mattress that's leaning against the concrete wall, your delta P will be the same because your delta V is the same. But now look at this. If your delta P is the same in both cases, then... Um, which one uh, do you, does it take longer for you to slow down with? It is the, the one with the mattress, right? So if it's taking you longer to, uh, to slow down, that means this value is higher for the mattress case, which means that the, the, the force that the mattress wall applies on you is lower. Okay? So, whereas if you are crashing into the concrete wall without the mattress, then the time it takes to slow down, the time that the, it takes to slow down is, is much shorter, which means that the force applied is higher. So, hopefully this gives you a bit of an intuitive understanding. Okay? So, go through this section. This basically explains what I've been saying there. Okay. I mean, that, that is basically why you want to crash into the mattress, is because it takes longer to apply, it takes longer to slow you down, which means it requires a smaller force 
applied over a longer time to give you the same change in momentum, the same impulse. Okay, so if we consider uh, impulse now in terms of a graphical presentation, we can have force times time curve, all right? And if we have a constant force being applied over a, a, a specific time period, then this is it. You just have a, a straight line or a horizontal line. Now the impulse is the area under that curve, okay? Now this is for a constant force. What about a varying force, a time varying force? So say now there's a cart and you give it a push and you let it go, then you've, you've um, applied an impulse to the cart, right? There's the system. Your, your hand is an external force. It's applied over a specific time and there's the impulse. Bam, bam, okay? And when you have something that's varying like this, you need to integrate that force time function. You need to integrate it with respect to time. So your change in momentum or your impulse is the integral of this, of this uh, function. And so if, if your cart had a certain initial impulse, then the area under the curve is, is the delta P. So if you calculate the area under the curve, it is the change in momentum. It is the impulse. So that delta P, that delta P there, is equal to the area under the curve. Okay? All right. Now, of course, if the vector sum of the forces exerted on an object is zero, then the object is in translational equilibrium and your delta P is equal to zero. Cheers.